because this problem has not only one, not only two, but at least 54 solutions. 54 solutions? No kidding. Are we going to do all of them? No. We will do the most brilliant one, the most simple one that a fifth grader might be able to grasp. However, I do want to point out that after I learned that there are more than one solution, I went about looking for all of the solutions and I found this very interesting article from 1971 by Charles Trigg, a three-square geometry problem. It was published in the Journal of Math Recreational Mathematics. So you can see the problem on the front. It's kind of reflected, but the same problem nevertheless. And so he tells us a very interesting story where he learned the problem from. The problem was supplied by Liber Kotz, whose fourth grade geometry class in Moscow had been given it to solve for extra credit. Mr. Katz wrote, the problem was given to our fourth grade class, average age 11 years old, during the 1931-1932 school year. This was during the first year of a two-year plain geometry course, probably at the time of study of similar triangles. We probably had had three years of arithmetic in the first three grades. Fourth and fifth grades were devoted to geometry. Beyond that, in the sixth and seventh grades, we studied algebra. In the eighth grade, it was solid geometry and trigonometry. I returned to the United States in 1936. Since my English was practically non-existent and chronologically I belonged there anyway, I was enrolled in high school in New York City and I had to repeat all the academic courses, this time in English. Since the same material was covered and frequently in less depth, I assumed that the Soviet school was about three to four years ahead of its American counterpart. Now, whether this is true or not, Perhaps it depends on what school you go to in the United States and what the mathematical program is there. But one thing has become clear to me. The geometry really is lagging behind. And the first serious course which US students take in geometry is high school geometry, which they take either in ninth grade or the more advanced ones in eighth grade. So this article contains lots and lots of different solutions. You go on and there are some really fantastical constructions which, ooh, and calculations. And some solutions are from geometry, some from algebra, some from calculus, and they are, you know, categorized, lots of different categories. In most of the solutions that you see here, there are some extra things that did not belong to the original uh, problem. And that is indeed a brilliant approach which mathematicians take to solve problems. They complete it to what's missing there. And then the problem becomes easier or perhaps even trivial. The question is, what is missing in our problem? How can we solve it in an elementary way that a fifth grader might understand. And when I say a fifth grader, of course, I'm assuming that that's, this fifth grader has had a little bit of geometry and he will recognize right isosceles triangles and he may also recognize congruent triangles, triangles which have the same shape and size. Now, Brady, I need another picture. No, I need more paper. <laughs> yeah.